Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Cranky Gun Reviews here. <clears throat> this is going to be a little bit different video for me. You remember those old days? I mean, maybe you didn't, but I had friends that liked to partake of the drinks of the alcoholic persuasion. And there were some of them that really had problems where it didn't matter what the alcoholic drink was, they would drink it. We like to call them alcoholics. Like, Somebody was cleaning out their liquor cabinet and they said, I got Sambuca and uh, Jägermeister and vodka. We don't drink it. You want it? They would say, sure. And they'd go home and they'd drink it all. Those are alcoholics. Well, there are some people like that that no matter what they can get for ammo, when they go to the store, if it's available, they're going to buy it. I'm a little bit ashamed to say I may be an ammoholic. I don't know. You tell me. Ready? That's right. 25 ACP. What? what? <clears throat> Sorry. At least I didn't say I bought a uh, high point, although I had one of those. I sold it. What is this video really about? Well, let's talk about how bad the ammo shortage has actually gotten. Some people would say there's a couple things wrong with this image. One would be this stuff here, 25 Auto. The other thing would be this thing here, Raven Arms 25 Auto. This is an original Raven Arms P25, not an MP25. This was the first generation Saturday Night Special Pistol made by Raven Arms. This one is about a 1973, I believe. And um, yeah, why do I have this? Well, funny story. I was in my local Cabela's a couple weeks ago. The only ammo they had on the shelf for pistols was 25 auto. So I bought a whole bunch of it. Basically as much as they would let me buy, which was everything they had on the shelf. Did I overpay for it? Well, Cabela's hasn't really been scalping their prices on ammo. However, they don't really have much in stock. But they had an entire shelf of 25 auto. 1,000 rounds. So I bought it all. Then I said, well... I don't have any 25 auto pistols. What do I do about that? So, being the good conscientious gun owner I am, I went online to all the shops in my area, and the very first 25 ACP I found was this Raven Arms. Did I overpay for it? Probably. But, uh, in the state that I live in, I've never seen one of these for sale before or since. And from what I understand, they're Zamac frames, which is a zinc alloy metal. Uh, they're fairly reliable. They are somewhat durable. Uh, they have a steel barrel that's dropped down inside to the Zamac frame, so the barrel itself is actually a little bit better than the frame of the gun itself. And people say that the firing pins on these break. They say that the recoil springs on them aren't that good. So I did what any conscientious gun owner should do. Bought an extra firing pin and bought some extra springs, as well as a couple extra magazines, which are still available from Phoenix Arms. So now I have a subpar, uh, not worth what I paid for it gun, two extra magazines for that gun, and an underpowered round, and some extra recoil springs and a firing pin for when this thing will break. I did take it out to the range last week, and I have to say, even as small as this thing is, and as crummy a product as it is, the trigger on it's not bad. And at uh, 7 to 10 yards, that thing is very, very accurate. Uh, trigger actually, like I said, to me it felt really good, and uh, it's not a bad gun. But I'm going to go ahead and show you something else I bought in 25 Auto as well. So this is another purchase that I got in 25 ACP, and some of you may recognize this. This is a Beretta Model 21A in 25 Auto. And the nice thing about these, they have these flip-up barrels, which you can very easily see that there's nothing in the chamber on them. Also come with a uh, eight or a nine round magazine, the Mechgar replacement magazines, which these two outside ones are. These are nine rounds. This is an eight-round magazine from the factory. So 25 Auto, in this little guy, you can actually have 10 rounds of 25 Auto. Now, again, the reason this all came about, originally, 
I had seen a Beretta 950 in a store that was for sale. And actually a friend of mine told me about it and I called the guy at the gun shop and he said it was sold. So then I started poking around on all my local gun sites and some online, um, you know, gun broker and some of those other ones. And I couldn't really find much. I could find some 950 BS models or some 21As in other parts of the country, but they were going for, you know, three, $400 on average, maybe a little bit more in some areas. And then I have to account for shipping, which was usually around 40 to $45, and then an FFL transfer to get it transferred to me. Um, so it was just easier to try to keep my eyes open and find one in a local shop. Well, after I bought all the 25 Winchester ammo, I found this Raven, and then two days later, I found the Beretta. So you can't return guns at most gun shops, and I tried trading this guy in at the shop where I bought this one, and they offered me 40 bucks, which is a lot less than I paid for it, I'm ashamed to say. This is probably worth about 125 to 150 dollars. I paid 200 for it, um, and this guy was a lot more than that. So I was just trying to see maybe if they'd give me 100 bucks or 150 on this guy, I would take it and use it on trade for this one. But because they offered me 40 bucks, I figured I'd just keep it. It's fun. Uh, it goes in my my backup area um, with some ammo with it. I don't keep it loaded just because that thing scares the crap out of me. It's not the best quality uh, pistol, but it does work. So, Beretta Model 21A, I was either looking for a 950 or a 21. Again, this is empty. You can see there's nothing in the barrel. So, the reason I like the 21A even better than the 950 is this one is a single action, double action. The 950 is only a double action pistol. Or wait, only single action. So, the hammer has to be cocked before it'll fire. Um, this particular one, and again, it's empty, safety's off, you can pull the trigger, it cocks the hammer, and it fires. So, just like a double action revolver, long trigger pull, pretty heavy, probably about 10 or so pounds. Then, once it fires the first round, the hammer will be cocked, and then it's single action, amazingly short trigger pull, probably about 4 pounds if I was to guess. This thing, and that, believe it or not, the two of these... I was getting, I think I was shooting actually at um, five or seven yards the day I was out there, and I was getting between a two and three inch group with 25 auto at five to seven yards. And the sights on this thing are so tiny, like you can just barely see the front sight, it's a blade sight, but it is so tiny that it's really hard to get your target acquisition with this front sight, but I was still hitting pretty good groups with that. And then this guy, the sights on it are, you know, nothing to write home about either. But very good example of a Raven Arms P25. It actually is fairly reliable. Uh, the issues I do have with this, the first round when it chambers it, I have to slam the slide home. I believe it's because the extractor needs to go over the lip of the first round. After that, it works fine. I Like I said, I do have new recoil springs for that that I'm going to put in. This guy, I mean, it's a Beretta. It's every level of quality that you'd expect from a Beretta, functions flawlessly, shoots really well, it's fun, and I put these grips on it. I think these are Altamount Company grips. They're super comfortable. They're a little bit thicker than the factory ones, and that's one big thing about the, the Beretta, the thickness of it. it. Even though it's a tiny pocket gun, you can get a really good purchase on this because the grips are pretty thick. The plastic ones that it came with are a little bit thinner than this, but Realistically, this is still thicker than I like to carry in my pocket. <clears throat> what I do have for it is this ambidextrous Barsony belt slide, uh, kind of a pancake style holster with a Velcro, I mean, not a Velcro, but a um, a snap thumb brake on it. And this thing was like $24 or $23 on eBay, shipped it to me in about a week. Super comfortable. You don't even notice it's there. And because this gun is so small, when it's inside when it's inside this holster, it only sticks down about an inch and a half to two inches below my belt. So I can still conceal this thing, even without it being inside the waistband. It's an outside the waistband concealed carry because it's so small. So this works out really well. And just for a size comparison between these three guns, again, the Beretta, this is the Raven Arms MP or P25, 
And then I also have my Smith & Wesson Bodyguard 380. You can see the size comparison between the three guns. So Bodyguard 380, set the Raven on top of it. You can see how tiny that Raven is compared to the Bodyguard. And then do the same thing with the Beretta. The Beretta and the, um, the Bodyguard are closer in size. <clears throat> but you can see the barrel on the bodyguard is about a half an inch longer. The trigger guard comes down about a quarter of an inch more. And the grip sticks out a little bit more. So, 25 auto handguns. Extremely small. So the power from 25 ACP handguns is questionable. Some people say it's not nearly enough for stopping power. But there's also the philosophy that if you had to ever use lethal force and you put 10 rounds in somebody, and you couldn't run away after shooting them 10 times, you're probably going to die anyway. So in a self-defense situation, this is more of a get-off-me gun than a, uh, you know, end-all, be-all, like a 45 ACP. But will it do the job? I think it will. The accuracy that I've seen out of these two guns is really good. I don't have a problem carrying one as a backup. <clears throat> I don't really make a point to carry the Raven, I have carried the Beretta a few times, and I don't really have a problem carrying it as a backup. I don't know if I would carry it as a primary, but it is a cool gun. So there you have it. How bad is the ammo shortage? Well, when I'm out there buying 25 auto, it could be pretty bad. I haven't found 9mm in a store in a month. Um, just yesterday, I was able to get two boxes of 380 ACP. Today's October 22nd, 2020. I found two boxes of 380 ACP and three boxes of 223 at a shop in New Hampshire. That was their limit to what they would allow you to buy. But ironically, a couple shops still have a shelf full of 25 auto. So if I can still find it, now that I have something to shoot it out of, I don't mind spending 20 or 22 bucks a box on something that I can actually still find and shoot. And again, am I a hoarder? No. Am I a prepper? Kind of. I believe in being prepared. And again, having enough magazines to make it worthwhile to carry something is always a good idea. Thanks for watching Cranky Gun Reviews. Have a great day. And please remember, support your two-way rights. Keep shooting. And have a great day. God bless America.